Today in Getting Real with the Housewives, Tamara Judge reveals if she regrets her face peel. I had to deal with basically like a burn victim, like my skin was peeling off. My neck, for some reason, they say it's the most painful. Plus, Angie Kay breaks down her feud with Lisa Barlow. I always have good intentions, and anyone that knows me or has done business with me will know that about me. Mm -hmm. I think Lisa should know that about me by now. And Bethany Frankel claps back at the catwalk haters, and Heather Ray Elmosa reveals if she would ever make an OC appearance. Maybe Christina, you'll see, but I feel like I like having drama free. Selling Sunset was a lot for me, so it's nice to be able to just enjoy what I'm doing. We've got that plus so much more on today's Getting Real with the Housewives. Hey everyone, and welcome to Getting Real with the Housewives. I'm Christina, and we've got a ton of news to get to this week, including the secret lives of Mormon wives. I know I talked about it last week, but I just can't stop thinking about it ever since it debuted earlier this month. So viewers quickly began preparing for a brand new season of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City as this was getting ready to debut. So while each show has its own musty cast and jaw-dropping storylines, there appears to be a lot more connections um, within the programs than we thought. So although Monica Garcia was only on The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City for one very memorable season, she was willing to share some words of wisdom with her friend Layla before she joined Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. Layla told Decider, I know Monica. We are just kind of internet friends and we chat here and there. She's given me advice on the reality TV show world and stuff like that. Sweet girl, I wish she was still on this season, to be honest. I think she had a really good aspect to last season. I agree. Well, long before appearing on Secret Lives of Mormon Wives with his wife, Demi, Brett was previously married to Angie H. Love this story. So during their relationship, the couple welcomed two sons together named Rome and Cole. Angie has since remarried, while Brett has been with Demi since the spring of 2020. So there's a lot more crossover than maybe we thought, but definitely loving both um, of these shows so much. Of course, Salt Lake City is just really getting started. We're only in our second week of the show, and things are getting icy between Angie Kay and Lisa Barlow. So is this friendship done? Well, we had Angie K weigh in. Do you feel like you were just trying to be a good friend at first, just telling her about Whitney? or do you, and, and watching it back, do you see why she took it a different way? You know, um, I always have good intentions, and anyone that knows me or has done business with me will know that about me. Mm -hmm. I think Lisa should know that about me by mm -hmm. now. And I think that's what hurt is that she came at me as if she didn't think I had good intentions. And before she even knew what was going on, um, she was intense. She was leaning at me. She was standing up at me. And it, you know, it could have just been a conversation. She was assuming the worst. That's how I felt. And if the worst thing I said was, Lisa's upset that you did a podcast, um, that's really not bad because it was already out there. The minute Whitney did the podcast, Lisa was already responding, mm -hmm. already saying she was lying, already um, out in the press, being very vocal with how she felt. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I took a private conversation Lisa and I had and shared that information with Whitney. Mm -hmm. I put something out there to Whitney that the whole world knew, sure. that Whitney knew. So I don't think that was hurtful to Lisa or damaging. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, you know, had she not said it out loud, I wouldn't have said it out loud. Mm -hmm. And what I did say to Lisa, or excuse me, what I did say to Whitney in that little meeting at her home right. was you should probably apologize and you probably should have said it to her face. Mm -hmm. And it was the wrong way to handle it. So that part didn't air, but you know, I say it multiple times through the season, we may or may not see it, mm -hmm. uh, but I had good intentions and my hopes were that she would probably realize like this is gonna come up tonight and you owe her an apology and you shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Do you agree with Whitney now that she um, is the villain of the show? Well, I, I don't think Lisa's, Lisa's <laughs> our villain. She might be, she might be Whitney's villain. Right. She's not my villain, but, uh -huh. um, you know, that's how she felt in the moment uh, that, you know, and I can see those two have their issues. Mm -hmm. So everyone has their own villain or person that they battle with on the show, mm -hmm. uh, their nemesis. So if, if a nemesis and a villain are the same person, I guess she's Whitney's. Yeah. Who's yours? Uh, Meredith, as, Meredith, as, as per know. usual, yeah. I, I was hoping that I didn't have to say that again this season, mm -hmm. but it was more of the same. All right, well, always good catching up with Angie. All right, moving on over to Anne Marie Wiley. She gave fans an update on her health after revealing doctors discovered a tumor on her gallbladder last month. She said on Instagram, the gallbladder will be coming out very soon. The surgeons were very concerned about there being tumors on my liver, so we had an MRI last week, and the MRI did not.
not show any visible tumors or anything anywhere else. So that was incredible news. Following her upcoming procedure, Amory said her gallbladder will be sent to pathology to be inspected to determine if it is cancerous, malignant, or non-cancerous benign. Last month, she revealed via Instagram that she had been diagnosed with her gallbladder tumor after dealing with tremendous stress and anxiety for several months, resulting in her losing weight and experiencing debilitating epigastric pain. Rather than seek out help, she ignored her symptoms until the pain became unbearable. Really so sorry to hear all about this. Hopefully uh, she gets good news throughout her treatment, but definitely a scary situation for her. So our thoughts go out to Amory and her family during this time. All right, well, the thought of joining the Real Housewives of Orange County has crossed Heather Ray El Moose's mind and possibly the mind of Bravo producers. We caught up with the former Selling Sunset star who told us this about a possible turn on OC. Take a look. Well, you know, I, they may have reached out to me and I'm just too busy right now. It's just not a good place in my life to do that. And I love being able to film with, with my husband and be drama free. The drama is with the houses, you know, and now maybe Christina, you'll see. But I feel like I like having drama free. Selling Sunset was a lot for me. So it's nice to be able to just enjoy what I'm doing. Uh, I think I'd prefer HGTV. <laughs> yeah, but you never know. You just never know. You never know. Well, it seems like it's not in the cards as of right now. Well, it seems like it might be in the cards for Heather, but definitely not for Tarek. He doesn't really seem on board for this one. But I feel like maybe down the line, she could be a good addition. All right, well, Bethany Frankel responded to criticism of her strut during the L'Oreal Paris Walk Your Worth show. Bethany clapped back at a hater via Instagram on September 23rd, who commented, that walk, what the? Now, this was on um, a video of her strutting down the brand's spring 2025 show during Paris Fashion Week. Well, Bethany spoke out saying, I chose those shoes, speaking of those tall black platform heels. She said, L'Oreal said, you can pick anything you want. And I chose those shoes because I wanted to be like a giraffe with those elongated legs. Her legs did look great. Um, the New York City alum continued, one of those long-legged creatures that walks the runway and looks like they're not even the same species. And I loved it. While on the catwalk, she beamed as she twirled and swung her arms. She gave Viola Davis a high five as she passed her on the runway. She added that the point of the show was a about not being perfect, about being perfectly imperfect and doing what you want to do. She added, do what the F you want to do. That's what I do. You know what? Bethany looked like she was having the time of her life. Yes, the walk was awkward to look at, but she looked like she was having fun and she's walking a L'Oreal Paris show while we're just commenting on her Instagram. So you do you, Bethany. Well, Tamara Judge took social media by storm with her chemical face peel. So is pain really worth the beauty? Here's what Tamara told us. Well, how are you feeling? Your face looks fantastic. How are you feeling? It looks so good. I am feeling great. It's been yeah. actually four weeks today. My skin is still um, really sensitive and very thin and it's rebuilding and and um, I, my staples are removed out of my head from the brow lift. So that's a good thing. That's good. <laughs> and I feel like, you know, I'm still sore, but overall feeling pretty good. Good. Are you happy you did it? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Yeah. My mm -hmm. skin looks amazing. I know that Molly Sims spoke out saying that what you did was not a good idea because it breaks the barrier of your skin. Did you notice that at all? What changes have you noticed? And were you aware well, of that? I don't exactly know what breaks the barrier of my skin means, but um, my makeup hasn't slid off my face, like she said. And, you know, I get it. No disrespect to Molly Sims, but she is an ex model that is now selling skincare. And I think that I'm going to take the advice of a board certified, you know, surgeon. surgeon. So, sorry. <laughs> no, I haven't. I've had a lot of friends that have had it done. Um, my plastic surgeon does them all the time. Terry Dubrow, Heather said Terry Dubrow does them all the time. And I haven't experienced anything negative. Yeah. Well, you're glowing. You look great. <laughs> what, was the, what was the hardest part about recovery for you? I would say just the first couple of days were, was pretty brutal. And then mm -hmm. after that, you know, I had to go on a steroid pack to get the swelling to go down. So as soon as the swelling went down, that was less painful. But then I had to deal with basically like a burn victim, like my skin was peeling off my neck for some reason. They say it's the most painful 
it just burned. It Ooh. burned, it itched, and that lasted for a couple of weeks. I mean, I'm still like scratching to my hair <laughs> and getting like skin off. So. <gasps> Well, pain is beauty, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I have to say, Tamara does look fantastic. Don't know if I would go that far um, for a face peel, but whatever works for you. All right, well, that is it for this week's episode of Getting Real with the Housewives. Keep commenting, keep subscribing, and I'll see you next week.